name is Kylie. My name is Sydney. My name is Libby. My name is Liberty. My name is Jillian. And my name is Sarah. We're from Wildfire. Sunday Sundays! Hey, today after service, we're helping, y'all are helping True North Kids uh, by, you know, spending $3 on a Sunday and a dollar on a popcorn. Um, so, on, uh, on the 28th, um, the fireworks stand is going to be starting at noon. Be sure to get there as early as possible because supplies are limited this year. So make sure that you come get your fireworks before they are all out. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> okay, guess what? You're too slow. Never mind. Um, so in July... We are starting VBS, Vacation Bible School, so tell your children and your parents. <laughs> um, it starts on uh, July 21st, and it will be on Wednesday nights from 6 to 8.30, and we'll have four days, and those will consist of Nerf and Nachos, Bubbles and Barbecue, Kickball and Corn Dogs, with a K, Slides and Splits. Who, what does that entail? Or what else is going to happen? Who knows? But we'll be there and it'll be cool. So be there. Be square. Okay, I forgot to say um, that for <laughs> Vacation Bible School, text Marcy for a free shirt for your kiddo and um, they can have a free shirt and, you know, who doesn't want free stuff? Free stuff's great. Um, if you want to know Marcy's number, you can ask someone that has Marcy's number or me. And um, it is 425-698-9004. Remember that. And we want to thank you all for your very generous uh, tithing and giving and your support. Uh, it's very great. Um, some different ways that you can tithe is online, through the text app, you can mail it in, or put your money in the box in the back. Uh, a great verse on tithing is 2 Corinthians 9, 7 through 8. It says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So I love this verse as a reminder that uh, tithing is a great opportunity we have and that we should give uh, whatever we can and just remember that what we give, God gives back to us tenfold. That was great. I love that. Um, if you could bow your heads with me, I'm going to pray for our tithe. Um, dear God, um, I thank you for all of these generous people that come to church and give as much as they can to us and that they don't do it for anything back. They do it for you and they do it for us. And I just pray for everyone's health and that everything will go great in their lives. Amen. 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 All right, thank you, Wildfire. Well, there were walls between us, and by the cross you came and broke them down broke them down, yeah. Uh, there were chains around us, and by your grace we are no longer bound, no longer bound, yeah. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Yes, God, wake us up this morning, Jesus. So feel the darkness, Jesus. All the dead are coming back to life. 
Go back to life, yeah. And hear the song awaken. All creation sing when we're alive. Cause you're alive, yeah. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name and then my heart came alive. Woo! Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens. Come on, sing it again. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Yeah. You made us alive in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, we're alive, cause you're alive. No one love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, come on. Oh, no one love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Oh, what love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Yeah. We're alive in you today, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Oh, yes, you awaken me, Jesus. love we found, death can't hold us down. We shouted out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Oh, what love we found, death can't hold us down. Come on, church, sing it out. And oh, what love we found, death can't hold us down. Death can hold us down. We shout it out, you're alive, cause you're alive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're alive, cause you're alive, Jesus. Oh, your love is great. Your love is great. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Can we celebrate his love this morning? Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Make us alive today, Lord. Remind us we're alive in you today, Jesus. Remind us that you give us sight. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Oh, you I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies, yeah. Mm, I raise 
斯，哈利路亚。In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise a high hallelujah. Hallelujah! I will watch the darkness flee in Jesus' name. I raise the Hallelujah! Oh, in the middle of my mystery, I raise the Hallelujah. Lost, you hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. You are alive. Jesus, you are. Here today, you're here right now today. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, so we sing a little louder.
sing loud, yeah. Will you sing loud and lift our voices and pray? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We lift our voices and praise you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. So we sing a little louder. We will sing a little louder. the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive I raise a hallelujah our voices to you this morning, Lord. And God, even more important, we lift our hearts to you this morning. Jesus. Thank you, God.
Dios va
that is who you are. Jesus, it's who you are. Never stop, oh Lord. Even when I don't see, and even when I don't feel it, Lord, you never stop, oh Lord. You never stop, oh Lord. Sing it again. Even when I don't see you, even when I don't feel you, you never stop, oh Lord. Never stop working. Stop, oh, stop, you are the way maker, here in the work, promise me. sitting in here by myself and just praying and the word that I got was I love you just the way you are and I don't know who in here needs to hear that today but you don't have to do anything different for God to love you he loves you right now just as you are you don't have to change a thing so I just God, I just thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that you make a way when it seems like there is no way. And I thank you for all these kids here today. That as they go, and it's a fun day in Sunday school, as they watch a movie and eat chips and Sundays and popcorn later, that they would just feel your love. Feel your love by the people surrounding them. And just feel your love in their heart today. Jesus, I thank you so much for every single person here. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Yeah. All right, kids. If you are a kid, it's time to go to Sunday school. It's movie day today. Uh, Miss Pam and Miss Jody are going to lead you up in the modular. Everyone's going to be together. Everyone else say hi. Are we greeting? Hey, say hi to somebody. Greet somebody. Say hi. Well, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Hey, in the spirit of worship, in the spirit of worship, we have a prayer warrior in our midst that um, when we communicate, there's only a couple words that I can communicate with Udi. This is Udi. Um, it's Jesus yes. and hallelujah. She wants to sing a song over us this morning, okay? And, and yeah.
Very good. Yeah. <laughs> it's precious. Well, I know in heaven I'm going to spend some time in the Punjabi area of heaven because uh, I want to know what we just sang. But we've, she's come, she prays for us faithfully. I want you guys to know that Udi prays for you faithfully, daily. Um, when she goes on her walk, she had double knee replacement, so she has to walk. She has to walk by our church a couple times a day, and she's out there in the road lifting her hands and praying for you as a church daily. So um, thank you, Udi. Thank you, Udi. She's coming a couple times with her cell phone and plays me videos from India of worship services. that are And they're big, big. And I have no idea, but it's fantastic. So I love it. I love language. And so um, one of my regrets in life, for I'm speaking to students mainly, if we have students in the room, is language. I did the bare minimum in high school. I had only had to take a semester. Kevin, can you imagine? You know, it, when I went to Kent Ridge High School, only a semester was required. So I did the bare minimum. And I learned German. Yeah, yeah. My name in class was Wolfgang. I thought it sounded cool when you're, you know, a sophomore. And, um, and um, the only thing I really remember from German is Das Radio. Means the radio, okay? That's my equivalent to German class. But I do regret not really just diving in and really taking language on seriously because we live in a world of language. And it's because man, women, I'm going to leave you out of it. Because man messed up and they said, we don't need God. We can do our own thing. We can get to heaven on our own. They built this massive tower, and somehow they were able to do, start this thing, and God was like, I got to do something. And so he created language, and they're all like, well, we can't communicate. We can't figure this out. So they all just dispersed and hung out in their own languages, and uh, that's where we are today. Um, but I do regret not jumping into language. I know some of you guys speak multiple languages in here. If you speak more than one language, raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Okay? Impressive. Impressive. No judgment for those of you that aren't raising your hands right now because you notice me. My hands are about as low as they can get. Okay? Keep your hands up if you speak more than one language. How about two? Keep your hands up if you speak more than two. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we might have a few liars in the house. Yeah. No. Okay? So keep your hands up high. So if you speak more than two... Okay, how about more than three? So three, four, four languages. Okay, four, all right. So stand up. If you still have your hand raised, stand up. Vincent Bakhtiar. Bakhtiar, how many languages? Five or six, yeah. Vincent, how about you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you just say 12? Okay, okay. <laughs> what? Oh, whatever it was. Four or 12. Fantastic. I mean, I can barely, you know, you guys come, those of you that come on a regular basis, you understand that you barely can speak English, buddy. You just stick to English, and I'm working on it. I'm still working on it. Hey, um, we love to celebrate life here. Um, and it's sometimes, what I love about the song, Raise a Hallelujah, by the way, props to Sydney this morning for singing, yeah, um, is because it's such an honest, real song. God, I want to praise you, in, and so what the line really stands out, there's a whole bunch of them, but in the middle of my mystery, God, I want to praise you in the middle, because life is... Like for right now, it's very mysterious. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does, but we think we do. 
And so in my world right now, that line really stands out. And the other line is, in the middle of the storm, I'm going to praise you, God. I'm going to lift my voice. In fact, I want to be louder than the storm. And so we love life. We want to celebrate life. We want to remember that God has given us life. He's given us life. And so we've had birthdays this month in June, and a couple of them left the room, probably intentionally because I told them I was going to say. <laughs> but we had a bunch of birthdays in our church in the month of June, and I wrote a few of them down. Um, Doug, who's watching at home, who had back surgery. So Doug's birthday is tomorrow, as well as Pastor Pam, who disappeared. Um, it's, and for Pam's birthday, we put, put your flags out. Tomorrow? Okay. All right. It's Cleo's brother's birthday tomorrow. Andrea had a birthday this month. Okay. She's 39. Okay. Michelle, my neighbor across the street, next week, birthday. Toby Capps, birthday. My uh, in-law, Dawn, her birthday was just this last week. Patty, is it your birthday this month? What? Tomorrow. Wow, Patty. I need a pen. I need to write this down. Patty's birthday. Patty, congratulations on a birthday tomorrow. What's that? Oh, Bob, you have one this month too. I'm not counting Bob's. <laughs> Just, joking. Just joking. Just joking, Bob. You know I love you. If you don't, I hope you don't. Okay. We also had a special birthday, and I, since I have the mic on, I can actually say it. We had somebody turn 90 years old this month. Now stop it. It wasn't my birthday. It was, it was actually Gretchen's birthday, my stepmom's birthday. Um, on Thursday, she turned 90 years young. And uh, so, uh, she's right there. That's very special. So Jesus came to give us life. And the NIV describes it as abundant life. There's all kinds of different ways you can describe abundant and sometimes we get in trouble because like, oh, God wants me rich. He's giving me life. So that's supposed to be abundant because the word abundant just means plentiful, huge, huge amounts, full quality. But it really is the word rich. And it's not necessarily, we're not talking cash, but just we're full. If you are a follower of Jesus, he's filled you with his Holy Spirit. That means we are full, right? We are full of him. It's not us. It's all about him. It's kind of like when you say, man, this cookie, like if I'm eating this cookie, this cookie's really rich. You ever hear anybody say that? It's not like you break it open and money's falling out. It just be it's full of goodness. Speaking of cookies, for those of you that served yesterday and came and said, hey, I'll give up two or three hours and work at the church, um, Jan and Bill, or was it just Jan? Bill, Te yes, <laughs> that absolutely counts. Um, she made us homemade chocolate chip cookies, and um, they're rich because they're full of chocolate, two kinds of chocolate. Yeah, I'm just, anybody want a chocolate chip cookie? Come on, come and get it. How many, wait a minute, how many did you have yesterday? 12? 12? Take one, to, take one to Ken. I want to see Ken eat it with his mask on. Okay. Anybody else? Seriously, just really want one? Pastor Marcy? Hey, we're talking about being rich and full. And some of you are like, seriously, you're like dying to have one, but you're embarrassed to raise your hand. Kevin Orwak, come up here and get a cookie. How many did you have yesterday, Ken? You had seven cookies? Sit down. Here, hold that for me. Ken worked his tail off yesterday. He actually dragged the parking lot, too. There you go, Pat Rockwell. Mercy, yeah. Can I just say I is rich? You are rich. Yes, you are. I is rich. One, one more. Come on, seriously? All right. Because my son's here. Josh, here. Okay, there you go. 
He actually reminded me because he was saying the other day when we were at Gretchen's birthday party, he was eating this brownie. He goes, man, these brownies are so good. They're really rich. And I was like, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Because we are rich in Jesus. And in him, we don't need anything. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. First Peter says, God has given us everything we need to live this life. And to live it right, to live it for him. He's given us everything. First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians 1 says, God has anointed us, sealed us in him, and his spirit has been given to us as a deposit in our hearts, guaranteeing our what's next. So we celebrate life this morning, and we celebrate life together. Oh, she's waving Bibles around. Hey, who needs a Bible this morning? We're going to open up our Bibles today. And we really, I know if you have Bible apps, that's great. Um, that's really good because I don't know if you're like texting somebody or if you're, it's a great way to hide. You can be checking out Facebook or the latest tweet or whatever it is, your Instagram account. But it's not, nothing like actually holding the real deal in your hand and turning the pages. Nothing like it. Even if I don't see that you're working. And God, even when I don't feel that you're working. Have you ever asked that question? Like, God, I don't see you right now. God, I don't feel you. I'm not experiencing. And we're Pentecostals here at this church. And sometimes we get kind of lean into the, the experience part. And sometimes, and I don't think intentionally, but by accident, we begin to even worship that experience. We begin to like, man, it just feels good. I mean, worship today, incredible, right? Yeah. Jesus shows up in our midst, and it's like, I don't want this to stop. Because it feels like, wow, I can feel, feel your presence, Jesus. It's really important that even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, and maybe some of you are there this morning. I've been there. I'm there often. It seems like I make that trip a couple times a day, maybe 20 times, maybe 12 times a day. 12 is our number today. <laughs> that I, that God, I'm not seeing it. I'm not feeling it right now. Well, sometimes things happen because of the decisions that we made, and we're not seeing it and feeling it because of consequences. But sometimes things just happen because we live in an absolute broken world. It's important to remember that God has promises for us. To know he has a plan to, to view this life, not in just the temporary, not in just the what's now, but to view this life with kingdom glasses, with eyes that actually see that th this life is way bigger than just me. And just what's going on around me. This is an eternity life. That we live life eternal. And so whatever our 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120. I'm prophesying about over some of you. Whatever that might be. It's eternal. We can't just think of the temporary and the now or what's going on. But we have to think, hey, this is eternal. Today we're going to cover John chapter 9. Yes, the whole chapter. Wow. And I'm going to hit highlights for you. Really what I, want, what I want to do is I want to give you landing places. Landing places. If you have a church Bible, it's page 921. I want you to find places that will speak to you. And it's really going to be up to you to go back and read this whole chapter on your own. And just read it this week. Read it two or three times this week. Read it. And then stop and pray. Okay, God, I want to read it again. Would you show me something this, today? That's what I do often. Sometimes I pray before. Read it, and I'll pray again. Read it. Pray again. Read it. It's interesting, in these 41 verses, there's nine conversations that happen in this passage. Nine conversations in 41 verses. 
is Jesus talking to his disciples and Jesus talks to a man who was born blind. And then neighbors start talking. And then neighbors start talking to the blind man. Then the Pharisees get involved. And so now Pharisees are talking to the blind man. They don't believe him. Now they bring in the blind man's parents. Another conversation. Then they bring the blind man in again. Another conversation. And then Jesus talks to the man again. And then Jesus, like often he does, has a conversation with the Pharisees. And what I want to do is I want to just read a couple, couple verses to start. We're in John chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. As he went along, Jesus, he saw a man born blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? That's an interesting question. Jesus, who sinned, this guy who was born blind or his parents? So that's why he's sick. That's why he's troubled. That's why he's not well. Have you ever found yourself asking that question? Why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? And Jesus gives an incredible response in verse 3. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. You can capture that? So it wasn't the man who sinned. I mean, baby boy, born, boom, sinner. But we know that, yes, sin passes down, yes. His parents didn't mess up, which caused this guy to be blind. Jesus said he's blind because that's God's plan. I don't want to be part of God's plan if that's the case, right? But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Now, other translations say it like this. That the power of God could be seen in him. The Amplified Version says that the works of God might be displayed and illustrated in him. And when I read that, I was thinking of the whole Seinfeld episode, the pirate shirt episode. And some of you guys are looking at me, blank stare, you have no idea. Who, who has never, ever watched an episode of Seinfeld in this room? God bless you. Amazing. <laughs> How in the world did you stay away from that? Because it's on every day, 24 hours a day, pretty much. Well, there's an episode where, where there's a soft talker, and Jerry doesn't have a clue what this woman's saying. And so he's just like nodding because he's trying to be polite. Because he's going on The Tonight Show. And she's, and so he's just like, yeah. Well, what she was asking is, hey, when you go on The Tonight Show, will you wear my pirate shirt? She's a designer. It's this puffy, crazy-looking shirt. And then Kramer comes in, the neighbor, and says, well, thanks for agreeing to wear the pirate shirt. And he was like, I don't want to be a pirate. That's the line. I don't want to be a pirate. And I was thinking of that when I was reading this passage. I don't want to be displayed. I'd rather just be normal. I'd rather just be able to see. I don't want to be illustrated. I don't want to be an example. I just want to blend in and just live my life. But man, God doesn't work that way. He has plans. And the word says that his plans are not our plans. But his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Because we only see the temporary. We only see like the now. But God has eternity in his hands. And everything is working towards him. And I want you to know, this is a hard message to preach. Because I don't want my wife to be displayed. 
and illustrated. She can't even be at church right now. And our precious friend, Jackie, is home watching her and being with her today. I don't want that. Cleo doesn't want it. But that's what we have. And so, God, you're illustrating us because it's for his glory. It's for his glory that people will look at circumstances that you're walking through. And like, I don't know how they're doing it. And all we have to say is, it's Jesus. It has to be Jesus. Because I don't see it, and I don't feel it, but it has to be Jesus. The Message Bible says this. And Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. You ever look for somebody to blame? I got to blame somebody. There is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. <laughs> right? We look at our circumstances and we want to blame. Why did this happen? Oh, it's your fault. Oh, no, it's my fault. And Eugene Peterson, when he translated this verse, he's not saying, hey, we're, look, we're asking the wrong question. It's not who has done what and who's to blame, but it's let's watch what God can do in the middle of it. This guy is begging. He's just hanging out. He's born blind. We don't, know, we have, don't have a clue how old he is. I believe he's pretty young because we're going to see later, like when his when he talks to his par the parents are talking to the Pharisees, they're like, "Hey, he's old enough to answer his own questions," because they're a little afraid, and they're like, "Hey, he's of age; he's old enough to answer his questions." So many believe that this guy's like a teenager because he's old enough to ask and be responsible to answer the question, and he's just doing his thing. He's just begging, and he's like right there because. If you read on in that passage, Jesus turns to the guy and then begins to, the process of healing. And I was very intentional with those words. He begins the process of healing in this case. So they're like talking about this guy while he's right there. That's kind of awkward, right? That is awkward. We're actually going to see it a couple times. This poor guy, maybe because he's blind and people are like, well, he can't hear, so... But multiple times in this passage, we see that people are talking about him, and he's right there in the room, standing right there. So Jesus turns, and he begins the healing process. And what he does is he spits in the ground, and he makes mud, and he wipes it on the guy's eyes. And then he tells him, now I want you to go. And there's a certain place I want you to go. I want you to go there. And I want you to wash the mud off. And that's it. That's the only conversation. It really was a one-sided conversation. Because here, it doesn't say that they conversed. Many of us think one-sided. Like, if I just talk to somebody and don't take time to listen to them, that's a conversation. Sorry, that's not a conversation. So I take that back. There's only eight conversations in this passage. Because Jesus just turns and says... Well, he doesn't say. He spits first, makes some mud, wipes it on his eyes. and so, Then he says, now go wash in the pool of Siloam. So what does the guy do? I have nothing to lose. This is good. I'm going to try it. So he, he's obedient. He goes, he washes, and he can see. And in this case, when we look at healing, because a lot of times we think, oh, healing's instant. When Jesus spoke, people were healed. Yes, yes, but not always. Sometimes healing is a process. Sometimes healing takes steps. And in this case, there are steps of obedience because some random guy you don't even know spit on the ground, wiped mud on your eyes, and told you to go wash and so he did. But here's where we get kind of locked up in when it comes to healing. It's like, oh, I wonder how much spit. 
I, what kind of dirt was that? It has to be a special dirt. So what region was that from? Because we need to go get that dirt. It's kind of like in baseball. You know, every major league baseball, before a ball game, every major league game, is actually rubbed down with a little bit of mud. You guys know that? It's from New Jersey. It's a special type of mud. It's where they get it. Every umpire staff has a little jar of it, and they get all the baseballs, and it takes the sheen off so it makes them so it's not slippery. Every major league baseball game, they are very specific about their mud. So I can just imagine people are like, hey, this is good mud. <laughs> so now you have all these little mud booths, healing mud right here, sold right here, right? What, what was the ratio? How much water did he put in that mud? I wonder what the pH balance of it was. You know, so we get so locked up in the details of the miracle that we forget about the one who did the miracle. We get stuck in like, oh, that was a great service. I want next week's service to be just like that. Well, guess what? God doesn't. Because next week, God's going to be doing something new, something different, something fresh. We get so locked up in, wow, that felt right. I want that. Or I want that mud. It worked the first time. Will it work again? I'm hoping. It's easy to get caught up in seeking the, the gifts and even the blessings of our walk with Jesus. Because let's be real. If you're a believer in Jesus and you walk with him, you're blessed. Might not feel it all the time, might not see it all the time, but you are. And that he's poured out into you gifts and abilities. And sometimes we get stuck just looking at the gifts and abilities and the, and the blessings. And we, forgot, we forget to say, oh, I need to worship the one who gives those gifts. I need to worship the blessed one, not the blessings. The story continues. So this guy goes and he's, he's healed and he goes home. And he's walking home, like looking around. First time he's ever seen his neighborhood. I want you to think about this. I mean, dive into these stories. This guy was born blind. Now he's going home. He's walking down. Can you imagine walking through and seeing your neighborhood for the very first time? And I don't care how bad it is. It would be crazy cool. I mean, I was watching YouTube videos this week of um, like little babies that when they first put glasses on them and they recognize the voice of their, their parents and then actually see their parents for the first time. I just couldn't show you. It'd be a mess in here. Or like I have some friends who are actually colorblind and they have these brand new glasses that have come out in the last few years. They're expensive, I hear. But you put them on and you can actually see everything in real color. Like I have a friend the other, a couple years ago, Thursday night football. I don't want to talk sports today, but Thursday night football, they always have a unique uniform. It's always usually one color. Seahawks color is that rave green. It's all like neon green, the whole uniform. Well, I think it was, it was two teams. I think it was the Eagles playing the Washington Redskins. And so the one team had all green uniforms. And the other team had all kind of, kind of reddish uniforms. My friend's colorblind. They all looked gray. It was the same color. He goes, I didn't know who had the ball. It was the worst football game I've ever watched in my whole life. Because I could not see a differenti differentiation of who had the ball, who, what player, who's playing defense, who's playing offense. It was just a bunch of guys running around. Many of you guys are saying, yeah, that's football. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but there's just a bunch of guys running around, right? <laughs> He's walking home, and he sees color and sees life for the very first time. And his neighbors are like, isn't that the blind guy? Isn't that the blind guy? 
And they're like, no, it can't be. The guy's blind. And he's like walking around in wonder. So it's a perfect, perfect doppelganger right here, right? And they're like, I think that's him. I'm not sure it's him. Poor guy, he's right there. They're all talking about him. He's like right there. And he says, yeah, it's me. It's me. And they're like, well, how? What happened? Let's look at verse 8. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How often or how then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on, the, put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. Cool story. But you know what stands out to me here? They're like asking, so who's, it, who's this guy? Well, I know his name. His name is Jesus. How can we find him? And he was like, I have no idea. I have no idea. And what I thought when I read that, I was like, man, I sure hope those of us that walk with Jesus and know him, that if anybody ever asked us, I used to see you act this way, and now you're like here. What happened? And I hope our answer would be, it was Jesus. Well, how can I find him? And I pray, really I do, that we could be, have, have a, an answer instead of saying, I don't know. I don't know. I hope we'd be able to say, well, it's right here. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus came to save us and rescue us and to give us abundant life. And to pour into us and lead us and guide us. He has created us for eternity. And he is preparing a place for us. And he invites all to come. Not just some. Jesus invites all who will follow him to come. I hope we, can ha we have an answer. I'm hoping. Man, I need to tell somebody about Jesus. Well, of course... Those neighborhoods are small. Word spreads. Even before cell phones, word really spread. Pharisees find out. They actually bring the guy to the Pharisees, and this whole conversation happens with the Pharisees. I'm not going to read that whole passage to you, but I do want to read a couple verses from it. I mean, they are drilling this guy. Pharisees believe that Jesus was actually... What we said last week, the Pharisees believe that Jesus was a Samaritan, which is the worst name you can call anybody in the day, if you're a Jew. They also believe that Jesus was demon-possessed, okay? John chapter 8, they mention it twice. <laughs> so they believe that Jesus is a sinner, And they're asking, hey, how did, how did you get healed? And, and he said, he put mud on my eyes. The man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Pretty simple. He put mud, but mud on my eyes. I washed, and now I see. I love it. If we jump down to verse 25. After the conversation with his parents, they don't believe the man, so they bring in the parents in. Like, this guy can't be the blind guy. They talk to the parents. They're like, yep, that's our son, 100%. That's who he is. And then they say, well, how did he get healed? And that's when they kind of backed off and said, we don't really want to answer that question because they were afraid to get kicked out of the synagogue. I'll say church just for us today. Because they had said anybody who believes in Jesus as the Messiah will be kicked out. They didn't want to be kicked out at this point at least. And so they said, you ask him. So they interview the man again. Verse 24. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. 
Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. This is the Pharisees describing Jesus. Verse 25, classic answer. I love it. Whether he is a sinner or not, this is the blind guy. Well, the former blind guy, I should say. The man formerly known as the blind guy. Okay. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? And how did he open your eyes? Well, they asked him that. But verse 25, look at this. Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. This is the formerly man known as the blind guy. I don't know if he's a sinner or not. I just met the guy. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Does that phrase sound familiar? I was blind, but now I see. Kind of sounds like a song. Man, just only if the worship leader would have had a clue this morning and actually sang that song. I was blind, but now I see. You know what song that comes from? We sang it, Amazing Grace. Have you ever heard all the words to Amazing Grace? Not here, you haven't. (laughs) Um, Hey, and you're probably saying, man, that guy's mean. Hey, I was the worship leader here for 20 years, so I can pick on myself, all right? Okay. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers and toils and snares, we have already come. Twas grace has brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. So good. And when we're home, when we've been there for 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. That's the lyrics to Amazing Grace. It is an incredible song. Written by a godly man. has to be. It has to be. These words. This guy was actually a pastor. He's a clergyman later on in life. You guys know what John Newton did before he invented the cookie? No, not Fig Newton. Okay. (laughs) Totally different guy. And not the guy with the apple on the head, the gravity guy. John Newton, 240-something years ago, this song was written. You know what he did before he wrote the song Amazing Grace? As a teenager, his dad was in shipping, so he was on the ship. He sailed the seas with his dad. And then he got into the trades. And you know what trades he got into? It was slave trade. John Newton worked on slave ships that went to Africa and brought slaves back to England. He was actually taken captive himself and was there for a few years and then was rescued and brought back. And you would think after... That, you would think, well, I'm not doing that trade anymore. He did. In fact, he, started, he owned his own ship. This guy was heartless. His own crew on his ship said he's a little more than an animal. And in fact, at one point, all he did was drink. He was super mean. At one point, he fell overboard. He was so drunk. And so you know what his crew did? Life ring? No. Lower the boat? No. They harpooned him in the hip. (laughs) Man overboard! Grab the spear! (laughs) And for the rest of his life, he walked with a limp. And you guys realize, this is the man who wrote Amazing Grace. In our culture right now, Amazing Grace would probably be canceled. But because of God's redemption, that whole time that he was in that trade, God was stirring in his heart. And then then even after he gave his life to Jesus, he was in that trade for a little bit longer. And then he said, I cannot do this any longer. We're all precious in his sight. And for the rest of his days, 
he fought against slavery. I mean, read his story. He fought against it. There's actually a movie called Amazing Grace. And the guy in the political realm in there was buddies with John Newton. And they fought that together and said, slavery is wrong. 100% absolutely wrong. And he penned the words to Amazing Grace that saved a wretch. That's what he's talking about. And so I know some people is like, well, I can't sing that song because I don't think I'm a wretch. I might be a wrench. Okay. Yeah. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of glory of God. The Bible says that the wages of that sin, the benefits of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus, the one who opens eyes. And that's what we see in this story. This guy's eyes are absolutely opened. And we see amazing grace take place right here. I want to let you read it for yourself because we're gearing up for ice cream and popcorn. Not yet. You don't have to go yet. Marcy's dying to serve us ice cream and popcorn. And I want to remind you to, my money's already here in my pocket, um, to stay after and get a little ice cream and popcorn. If you don't have any money, yeah, we do take cards. We do take cards? Wow. Okay. That's a lot of ice cream. Okay. $20 minimum? Is that it? Was that, okay. Okay. <laughs> Pharisees interview this guy one more time. And this guy starts playing with him, I think, a little bit. And like, hey, tell us one more time how you got healed. And he goes, I already told you. Do you want to be his disciple too then? And then they just rip into him. And in fact, at one point, then they just, they throw him out. Like, just get out of here. And Jesus finds the man and has this incredible conversation and what happens there is that Jesus did the physical miracle of opening the man's physical eyes. But the last part of John chapter 9, you'll see that Jesus completes the healing by healing this man's heart and his soul. So not only did Jesus want him to be able to see physically, but I want you to be able to see spiritually. I want you to be able to know that this is life is just not temporary and for the now, but it's forever. And you can have life in me. And that's the conversation Jesus has. You know, we ever watch one of those TV shows and uh, you're just totally getting into it. And all of a sudden the screen goes black. And those three dreaded words show up on the screen with a couple dots. To be continued. That's kind of John chapter 9 because Jesus says to the Pharisees, because you claim to be able to see, then I'm going to hold you accountable. You claim that you know God and that you can see and you know what's going on, then I am going to hold you accountable. And John chapter 10 starts off with, I'm the good shepherd. You really want to see and know who I am? I am the good shepherd. My sheep, those who follow me, they know me and they know my voice. We're going to talk about it next week. But I want to remind us this morning that we are saved by grace. It's not anything that you can do. It's not anything that you can earn. You cannot be good enough. Because if you could, you'd brag about it. There's scripture verses about that. Ephesians chapter 2. For it's by grace you've been saved. It's not anything you can do. You work it up so that no one can boast about it. But it's a gift from God. It's an absolute gift from God. That we're all new creations in Christ. Our old stuff is gone and he has new things for us. I do want to remind you this morning 
that healing is a process. Sometimes it is a process. And maybe you're watching from home or you're even in the room and you have sickness, you have trouble. And it's easy to look around the room and try to blame somebody and even blame God. Instead of blaming God, instead of blaming somebody else, instead of blaming yourself, let's look to God. Let's look to God to see what he can do in the midst of our circumstances, in the midst of the things that we need. So Jan is, Jana, Ken has a mic in the back. Jan was waving at me. Jan is one of our prayer partners. She comes a few times a week at 6.30 in the morning for prayer. She's heavily involved in uh, intercession here and prays for you guys often. So she's, they're working on getting a mic fixed for her, I think. Can We could always just use one of these on the stand. Okay. Ken, this is my mic. Here. We just do this so people at home can hear and get in on this too. One of the avenues that the Lord uses for healing is through the word of knowledge. It's a gift of the Spirit. And as I've been praying this morning, I believe he's giving uh, gifts of the word of knowledge for healing for someone. Now, if you need healing, you, you come before the Lord. But these ones in particular, the Lord has put on my heart that there's someone who's been having headaches, like it feels like a tight band on your head. If that's you, Lord, we just pray a release mm. of that and a complete healing of whatever is causing that. Lord, let your healing flow. Let your healing flow. Thank you, Lord. Yes, intercede with us hmm. all together. Someone has gotten a diagnosis of an eye disease, kind of an unusual eye disease. Just by faith, believe that Jesus is alive. He is here and present this morning. So, Lord, for that person with the eye hmm. disease, we just speak healing by your stripes. We were healed, Lord. It's it's done, and it's available for your people. Thank you, Jesus. Heal those yes. eyes. Someone has pain like sores in their mouth. It's been very painful. So we just speak healing and restoration mm. to the skin, to the mouth, that those things go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Someone has a gas gastrointestinal or stomach problem that's been causing you a lot of discomfort. So in Jesus' name, we speak healing to mm. that. We speak complete restoration. Your resurrection life, that spirit that raised Christ from the dead is touching your body right now. Thank and you, we Lord. speak healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If there's anyone else who wants prayer this morning, why don't we all stand? And just lift your hand, and the people around you can pray. Because you know what? The anointed one, the Christ, is in you. We carry the spirit of the resurrected Christ in our clay jars, our vessels. Mm -hmm. So anyone here, you're born again, especially baptized in the Holy Spirit, you pray for those around you. Lift your hand if you need a prayer or something. In mm -hmm. church... Reach out. Reach out. Thank you, Lord. We just honor you that this is your moving among your people, that your spirit is here, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of God in a mighty way to heal and deliver and set people free. We give you honor and glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen, amen. And let's just take a, take a few moments and pray. Let's just be in the spirit of prayer for, for healing. The eyes would be 
physical eyes would be open, but that spiritual eyes would be opened as well, just to see the things that God is doing. I also want to pray over um, those of us who experience things that are unseen, um, anxiety attacks, depression, addiction, um, the things in our minds and our emotions that are not the way that they should be and those things that feel like they will overwhelm and they will win. And I want to remind us that the resurrection of Jesus is stronger than any of those things, that it is not an equal fight. That it's not like the power of Jesus and these internal things have equal standing in this fight, but that the resurrection power of Jesus is so infinitely stronger than any of those things. And so, Jesus, I put before you anxiety and depression and addiction and uncertainty mm. and insecurity and um, just all of those internal things that unsettle us and make us feel like we are standing on shaky ground and we place our feet on your firm foundation on the strength and power of your resurrection and we submit ourselves to you knowing that you have already won this fight for us, God, and that we will see your glory this side of heaven, that you are working and that you are powerful and you are making a way in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Claire. Hey, our God is real. Yes. The Bible says that he's the same, that our God does not change, that what we read in this book, he did, he does, and he will do. And so for some of us, we might like, what just happened? Service was going so well. Hey, we really believe that God speaks to hearts today and gives us exactly what we need. Like a few weeks ago during prayer worship night, it was small. There was just a few of us. Um, I guess it was last month. And Jan had that same word about healing, um, but she was very specific. And she said, someone has like a bone spur on their heel that God wants to heal. Um, and I had just gone to the doctor and guess what? I was diagnosed with this bone spur in my heel. And it really hurt. And guess what? Well, she was praying that. I was like on my stool up here with my guitar, and I started like kind of wiggling my foot around. And I was like, well, wait a minute. What just happened? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, gone. It's crazy, right? Because God still works. God still moves, and he's active, right? Because he loves you and cares for you. Now, here, I do want to say this. Sometimes God doesn't heal. It's, that's going to be controversial for some of us to hear. Because he wants to illuminate himself through us and in us for those people, to, other people to see. And ultimately, honestly, our ultimate healing is when we're gone from this shell and we're in heaven. I mean, I've prayed for people and then Hours later, they're gone. You're like, well, God, you didn't hear my prayer. Well, that wasn't God's plan. God's plan was, he's mine. I'm bringing him home. You know? So sometimes we have that. So I just want us to be real. I want us to be honest. That there's times where, well, man, his bone spur was healed, but mine wasn't. And then we ask that question, why not mine? And then we start thinking about the blame thing instead of saying, okay, God, then what do you want to do? And if I have to walk around with a little bit of limp, then I will because I'm going to worship you even if I have a limp. I'm going to worship you in the middle, midst of the storm. One last really quick one, Judy.
Yeah. It's awesome. That's awesome. So that's glory, glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, hey, enjoy your week walking with Jesus. Read John chapter 9 and get into the story. But before you go home, go get some ice cream and popcorn. Again, if you came and didn't have any cash or anything, please get some anyways. We'll figure that out, okay? All right. Blessings to you.